Property taxes across America are exploding in 2022, and this is going to have a devastating impact on existing homeowners. It's gonna to lead to a mass wave of selling in the US housing market because quite simply, homeowners cannot afford these crazy property tax increases that we are seeing right now. Particularly in places like Austin, Texas, where the taxable value of homes just surged by 50% in 2022. Travis County Central Appraisal District in Austin said appraisal notices for the year are on their way to homeowners and spoiler alert, the values are up, way up. The median market value for a residential property in Travis County in Austin is now 632,000. This means that the market values and tax assessments of Austin homeowners is gonna increase by almost 40 to 50% and in some places it may be even higher. And these skyrocketing tax assessments and market values are a big problem for both existing homeowners and new homeowners in Austin because it means that their property tax bills are going up. That's because in Austin as well as across most of the rest of America, the tax bill you pay is a function of two primary things. Number one is the tax assessment or market value which we just talked about. That market value is then multiplied by the tax rate in the district to figure out the tax bill that you're going to own as a homeowner. And these tax bills, which have already been going up a lot across much of America, are now going to surge in 2022 and 2023 due to the booming housing market. For instance, take a look at this home that's on the market for sale in Austin currently for $625,000. The new home buyers of this home are going to be in for a rude awakening potentially on their tax bill. That's because if we look at the historical tax records, we can see that this home paid $5,400 in property taxes in 2016. That was based on an assessed value of $240,000 and a tax rate of about 2.2%. Fast forward to 2021 and the tax bill for this home nearly doubled to $10,000 per year. But now with that 50% increase in assessed values in Travis County, the value of this home is gonna be about $600,000 in 2022, which means its property tax bill could be $15,000 this year for that new home buyer. That would be triple the amount that the owner would have paid five years ago. And it's not just in Austin where these massive increase in tax assessments are occurring. For instance, assessed values in Dallas County are projected to go up by about 25% in 2022. Meanwhile, tax assessments in Maricopa County and Phoenix have already been sent out for 2023 and they are 35% higher from the previous year. Meanwhile, tax assessments in Davidson County and Nashville are up by 35% from where they were only a couple years ago. Unfortunately, this is ultimately gonna cause many homeowners to have to sell their homes because they can't afford these property taxes, particularly homeowners who are older and on a fixed income. For instance, households over the age of 55 comprise 54% of homeowners in America. That's right, folks. We have 82 million homeowners in America, according to the U.S. Census Bureau. 44 million of them are over 55 years of age. Of those 44 million homeowners over the age of 55, roughly half of them are retired, which means 22 million homes in America are occupied by people who are either on fixed incomes or living off savings. This means that seniors are especially vulnerable to property tax increases because they're making their money from social security or maybe dividends from their stock portfolio that aren't just gonna go up by 10, 15, or 20% in a year to match these increases in property taxes. So I believe we actually could see a lot of seniors end up selling their homes as a result of these property tax increases. Increases. Or conversely, I believe we're gonna see a greater focus on property taxes in terms of migration and where people move around America. And you can see on this map, there's vast differences in how much homeowners pay for property taxes depending on where you live. At the high end of the spectrum in New Jersey, where the tax rate is 2.5% and the typical home value is 447,000, the average annual property tax bill is around $11,000 in the state of New Jersey. Don't be surprised if you see some homeowners homeowners in New Jersey saying, look, I can't afford this. I'm going to sell my property in New Jersey and then move to Pennsylvania right next door where my tax bill is going to be 65% lower. Or don't be surprised if we see homeowners starting to move out of Texas. Texas has an average property tax bill of $5,300 per year, and that bill is going to be close to double that in metro areas like Austin and Dallas. A Texas homeowner who is concerned about property taxes could move to Oklahoma and pay 70% less, or Arkansas and pay 80% less. Meanwhile, a homeowner in Washington 
Washington, who's paying nearly $6,000 a year in taxes, could move to Idaho and cut that bill roughly in half, or even move further to Wyoming and cut it down by 60%. Now, before getting into this video further, we're gonna explain to you guys the cities specifically that are gonna see the biggest problems from increased property taxes. I first wanna address two key points, two key elephants in the room on property taxes that you all need to consider if you're interested in real estate and understanding the housing market. The first is that there is a lag effect in terms of property tax assessment increases. When we see the assessment go up, such as we're seeing in Austin right now, it's not gonna be until a year later that we see people actually have to pay that property tax bill because taxes are typically done in arrears. The second thing to remember is that actually many states across America, 46 of them, in fact, have some layer of protection for existing homeowners that typically prevents taxes from going up by 50% in a year. For instance, in Texas, if you live in your home and claim it as a primary residence, you can apply for the homestead exemption, which caps the annual increase in tax assessments at 10% per year. Meanwhile, states like Florida and New York cap the annual increase in tax assessments at the rate of inflation. So the most we're gonna see in those states in terms of tax assessment increases is about 8% going forward into 2022 and 2023. And finally, California is probably the most famous example of this. Back in 1978, through the controversial Proposition 13, California capped the annual tax assessment increase at 2% for existing homeowners, which is how you get a situation like this, where in San Jose, there's a house on the market for 2.2 million, where the existing owner only pays $3,200 a year in property taxes. So there are safeguards in place in many states for existing homeowners and especially seniors that cap the amount that taxes can increase in a given year. So we don't see all of a sudden just a burden of a 50% higher tax bill come in one year for an existing homeowner. However, in a lot of states, real estate investor owners do not get the same protection. For instance, Texas's homestead exemption, which caps the assessed value increase at 10%, is only available for primary homeowners and real estate investors who own the home and rent it out do not have the benefit of applying for that exemption. That means that in Texas and many other states, the burden of the higher taxation is going to disproportionately fall on real estate investor owners. And ultimately, this is where we're gonna see the biggest source of selling in the US housing market due to these higher property taxes is gonna come from investor owners who today own about 18 million homes in America. One reason I feel confident in predicting this is because actually the returns that investors get from buying a home and renting it out are actually already at all time lows. Data from Zillow shows that the rental yield that investors get has plummeted to an all time low in 2022. The rental yield takes the typical annual rent that investor can get from renting the home out and divides it by the price they would have to pay to buy the home. The resulting yield tells you how profitable it is for an investor to buy a home. And you can see we're at the least profitable time in US history for investors to own. Back before the pandemic, this rental yield was 7.7% and in 2015 it was 8.4%. Now it is at an all time low 6.8%, which means it's becoming increasingly unprofitable for investors to buy real estate. And it's not just the data saying this folks, the declining yields for investors and the problems that are gonna come from higher property taxes. People on the ground are also echoing these sentiments. Take a look at this article on the Austin housing market. Realtors are saying they have never seen anything like this. They're cautioning dramatic tax bill hikes for new homeowners, but in particular they're saying that landlords are gonna be the ones most exposed according to Chris Warren, who's been a realtor in Austin since 1995. He says, landlords, if you're leveraged on your mortgage, you're going to be negative cash flow on your property. And if you're not escrowing enough, you could easily be out 1,000 a month and then you could default. And it's not just landlords who buy with a mortgage that are gonna be in trouble. It's also big Wall Street landlords who buy in cash because the source of the cash for big Wall Street landlords who buy homes is typically a bank credit facility that's adjustable rate. And as the Fed hikes interest rates throughout 2022, we're gonna see the cost of borrowing for Wall Street landlords spike significantly which in combination with higher property taxes is going to ruin their returns and cause many of them to stop buying and then start selling. And so folks, just to recap, so far we've talked about the impact of higher property taxes on existing homeowners. It's gonna be there, but it's gonna be more incremental in nature due to caps on how much taxes can go up each year. However, investors often don't benefit from those caps. And so I believe we're gonna see investors start to sell their properties in 2022 due to 
these higher property tax bills. However, there's a third player in the housing market that's going to be probably the most negatively impacted by higher property taxes, and that's new home buyers, first time home buyers. Because for the most part, new home buyers don't benefit from any type of cap on property tax increases. So uh, when you buy a house today, you're kind of buying in at the higher assessed value and the higher tax bill. And ultimately, these higher property taxes are going to make home ownership just not affordable at all for new home buyers, especially in conjunction with rising mortgage rates. Particularly in a market like Dallas, where the total annual cost of home ownership has surged all the way up to $28,500 for a typical home buyer in Dallas. That's comprised of a $7,000 property tax bill combined with a $22,000 mortgage payment. Meanwhile, the typical cost of rent is $20,000. While that's higher than it used to be, it's not nearly as much as the cost of ownership. Same situation in Austin. The cost of home ownership in Austin between property taxes and mortgage payments is now up to $46,000. If you're a new home buyer in Austin, set aside $46,000 for your annual costs. That compares to $22,000 to rent. In a place like LA, we see an even more exaggerated difference. The cost of owning in LA between taxes and mortgage payments is now $60,000 compared to $34,000 to rent. And so the biggest impact of higher property taxes in conjunction with higher mortgage rates is that buying a house does not make any financial mm. sense in most parts of America, particularly in the areas in red on this map where the cost of owning is significantly more expensive than the cost of renting. We talked about Austin, we talked about Dallas, we talked about LA, but what about a place like Salt Lake City where the cost of owning is 95% higher than the cost of renting? Or a place like Seattle where the cost of owning is more than double the cost of renting? Now, of course, this phenomenon isn't equally distributed across America. There are certain metros in America where it is still cheaper to own than rent and thus higher property taxes aren't going to do as much damage to these housing markets. Such as a place like Oklahoma City, we're still in 2022, it's 8% cheaper to own in terms of your property taxes and mortgage payments than it is to rent. Or in a market like Columbia, South Carolina, where it's 14% cheaper to own than to rent. Or a market like Pittsburgh, where it's 4% cheaper to own than to rent. And that migration trend I talked about earlier that we're going to see more of people moving to lower property property tax states, you can extend that to people moving to states where the cost of home ownership is less than renting. I believe we're going to see increased migration to these areas in blue while people are going to move out of the areas in red. And ultimately, this is just a dollars and cents equation, folks. How much does it cost for me to buy a house in terms of property taxes and mortgage payments? How does that compare to the cost of renting? This is how most people make the decision whether to buy, and this is increasingly how most people are going to make the decision about where to move. Make sure to smash the like button if you enjoyed the content in this video and want to see more of it going forward. Also make sure you're a subscriber with your subscribe notifications turned on and then make sure to leave a comment below. I want to hear what are you seeing in your housing market if you're an existing owner, are your bills going up and are you starting to make a decision about where you want to buy a house based on how much the property taxes are and how much your cost of ownership is. Could you be moving to some of these areas in blue on this map or are you going to be staying in these areas in red and trying to buy a house there? Let me know in the comments below.